Ladies and gents, you have arrived at Next Level Radio, episode number 64. Today, usually I am very upbeat and excited, and I am excited to do this podcast, but very, um, the outlook is very positive when I'm doing this. I get to talk to people the best in their fields. I get to talk to people that are pushing the envelope um, People that do not settle for mediocrity. And uh, today, it's just a little bit different, but it's something that I have to get off of my brain. I have to get it off my mind. I have to talk about it to see how others feel. I have to shuttle out all the anxiety and uh, responsibility and burdens and things that weigh on me personally and weigh on everybody across the world that's going through this. And so today, we're not talking strength and conditioning. We're not talking investing. We're not talking finance. We're not talking business. We're talking what in the hell is going on in our world right now. I don't think anybody knows that answer. I don't think anybody feels 100% confident answering that to their fullest extent. It's something that we all don't have a lot of control on. It's something that we tend to put to the back of our brains because we don't want to think about it. I find issues with that. I find issues with being unprepared. I find issues with um, not taking on the issue head on. And so... This has no script. This is off the top of my brain. What's going on? This could be 30 minutes long or it could be four hours long. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's straight from the heart. It's emotional because it has affected people that I truly care about. I could give a shit. I, I, I could give two shits less about myself. But when it affects my wife, when it affects my mother, my father, my little siblings, when it affects what there is happening in their lives, that's when I get pissed off. And I have probably one of the longest fuses out there. But when that fuse gets lit and over time, it's, it's ugly. And uh, so, yeah, very um, off the cuff. And everybody knows that... Uh, March 2019 was the start of the weirdest times of our lives. Uh, At that point, I was a business owner owning a 4,000 square foot gym, having amazing partners. And we had, I think, three months, three to five months of actual operating business, um, doing very well, and then COVID striked. And if if we think back to that time, and like I said, this is off the cuff. This is exactly what's coming to my head right now. If we think back to that time, it was Corona beer memes. It was, um, this was released from a lab. But at that time, if you said this was released from a lab, you were shadow banned. You were thrown off the internet. And if we would have thought that time was weird, well, look at where we're at now. The leader of the Taliban. The leader of the fucking Taliban is allowed to spread propaganda and marketing campaigns on Twitter. And our ex-president cannot be on that platform. What do you think is going on with that? This is a story already written. They have already got this plan into swing and there's no stopping. I find myself going on TikTok and commenting and dismantling a lot of the very, very right conservative people that have these QAnon-esque, 
um, very crazy conspiracy theories um, on the internet. And some of those are very far-fetched, very far-fetched. But I would say this is a story already written. This is the story already written. This is exactly what they wanted. This is exactly the manipulation that is going on. Just think about that one thing. The leader of the mo one of the most violent in history, violent terrorist groups is able to spread their message on Twitter. And our president isn't because, oh, um, he had a group of people that went to the Capitol. Oh, let, we, we got to ban him. He's spreading propaganda. Wake up. So March 2019, everybody's world flipped upside down. And uh, if I'm being completely honest, it was the scariest part of my life. And I ask all my clients, I ask people 60, 70, 80 years old, and I'm very interested in this answer. And I say, is this the weirdest time that you've ever gone through? These are people that have gone through Vietnam, gone through the Cold War, were adults. I was a child, adults during September 11th. And they, hands down, every single one of them say, this is the craziest, weirdest, most out of the ordinary time that they've ever lived through. Every single one of them said that. Not, not one of them has said any different. And so when COVID hit, um, it was very weird. But in the end, where we're at today, I was actually found to be better off financially from uh, after COVID. It helped out with PPPs, with the CARES Act, with the American Rescue Act, all this stuff. And I didn't take that money and bought a new Benz or bought a new vehicle, paid off all debt, invested it. And so you can, you can uh, use these processes to become better off. But this is where I hope you guys can just set aside bias. And setting aside bias is not a human nature. We all have it, and it's very hard. But the CDC has completely um, recalled the rapid testing. So the rapid tests, um, the rapid tests that uh, shut down the entire country the rapid tests that we were watching on North Dakota Department of Health, Wyoming, Minnesota, South Dakota, Florida, anywhere, we're watching these numbers come in, these pi they pile in these numbers, and it's creating fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And these, <laughs> I can't even, it, it blows my mind that this is even a thing. These tests, that shut down our entire country, that almost lost me my damn business. And I was one of the lucky ones that lost thousands, hundreds of thousands of businesses, had to close their doors, their well being, their money that they feed their family, gone because of these rapid tests. These rapid tests created so much fear and uncertainty that all these businesses shut down. The CDC has reported and said that these rapid tests are invalid. They have too many false positives. Think about that. Why in the hell are we in this situation that we're in? Why the hell are we in it? So, let me look here. <sighs> Generally, antigen tests are indicated for qualitative detection of SARS-CoV-2. The FDA is aware of reports of false positive results associated with antigen tests used in nursing homes and other settings. 
and continues to monitor and evaluate these reports. So they're just sitting on their nuts. They're not doing anything about it. That test that shut down everybody, that created the most fear in this life, that created the weirdest time in anybody's life. Yeah, that's our government for you. Just going to let it ride. The more numbers there are, the more fear there is. The more fear there is, the more power they have. The more power they have, the less power we have. I just want you to think and maybe wake up. Just wake up, okay? Again, I go and dismantle. I would say I'm right of center. I go and dismantle these crazy, crazy conspiracy theories. But this is not that crazy, people. It's not that crazy. And I hope you, uh, I hope you realize that quicker than not. This gets me into inflation. So we, we go through COVID. We have all these crazy, crazy lockdowns. We have all this fear. And then the money starts piling in. And if I'm, I'm going to give some people a break. I'll give this administration a break. What else are you supposed to do? I get it. I do get it. So we don't print money. We go into a, 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 a U, United States recession, more likely a depression, and then a worldwide depression. Um, and Or we kick the can down the road and we just print money, print money, print money. And uh, so it's a hard situation to be in. We have to get funds to stimulate the, the market. But the thing is, there was so much fear created by this COVID that people started hoarding money. They didn't start doing anything with it. So I tried to fight my natural human instinct and started investing it, started helping stimulate the market. Obviously, my little bit of money isn't going to do shit. But being able to come out better on the other end is what I was looking for. Um, so due to this, we have seen lumber go through the roof. We've seen the housing market go crazy. We've seen all these different aspects of the largest bubble that we've ever seen. And yet it just keeps on going. Our CPI is through the roof. The Fed is talking about now finally tapering interest rates, but it's still not happening. There's just talks of it. And then people think that this inflation is just transitory. And, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy times. So if you don't know, um, hyperinflation is a very serious thing. Hyperinflation has happened multiple times. Hyperinflation, we have historical data to show how scary hyperinflation can be. Um, a few of the recent ones that many may know or people that aren't old enough can learn. Venezuela. And I'm going to read a paragraph that I prepared for this. Uh, but the most recent example of hyperinflation is in Venezuela. Prices rose 41% in 2013. And by the by end of 2018, inflation was at 65,000%. In 2017, the government increased the money supply by 14%. It is promoting a new cryptocurrency, the Petro, because the Bolivia lost almost all its value against the U.S. dollar. It can't afford the cost of printing new paper currency. In response, people began using eggs as currency. A carton of eggs was worth 25 or excuse me, 250,000 Boliviars compared to 6,740 Boliviars in January 2017. Unemployment rose to 20%, over 20%, similar to the U.S. rate during the Great Depression. How did Venezuela create such a mess? Former President Hugo Sat whoa, Chavez had ins instituted price controls for food and medicine but mandated prices were so low it forced domestic companies out of business. In response, the government paid for imports. In 2014, oil prices plummeted, eroding revenues to the government-owned oil companies. When the government ran out of cash, it started printing more. When the government ran out of cash, it started printing more. Hmm. 
As of 2019, Venezuela's foreign debt was about $100 billion. The annual inflation rate for the consumer prices was at 15,000%. With the continued collapse of its economy, the country is facing a monumental problem of debt repayment. At this moment, it is the only country in the world suffering, suffering from true hyperinflation. What scares me, people, um, we think about this, and I, I don't like thinking about this, but you've heard, the, you've heard the two statements, history repeats itself and Rome always falls. Why, and I, I get it because of our, our past, but why as Americans, as the United States of America, do we think we are, that we're protected against a fall of an empire? that we're protected from implosion from the inside out. Why do we think that? And I know we've had success. We have this, um, the greatest military power ever. We have all these great things. We have um, what used to be a great working government. We had a great working capitalist system. And now we truly believe that we are oblivious and we can't have implosion. What happens when China rolls out their cryptocurrency, the, the yuan, and Russia has their own as well, and China has already been dumping foreign investments that are in US dollars out of their economy? Russia is already breaking the dependency of the US dollar. So what makes, what makes us think that the U.S. dollar is going to continue to reign supreme over this world? What are we thinking? Do we think that we are oblivious, that we cannot have this happen? It's going to happen. I am a cryptocurrency advocate. I have most of my long-term investing in cryptocurrencies. They can change the world. But the U.S. passing infrastructure bills and different brokerage bills and tax implications are going to offshore all cryptocurrency use. And then the U.S. not wanting to adopt cryptocurrencies, pushing off a, a, CDB, a CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency, and having the rest of the world adopt this model will be the fall of Rome. It will be the fall of Rome. Mark my words. I don't want to hear that. I don't want that. I've grown up as an American that we're the most powerful, best nation in the world. That's what I grew up to know. And that could switch very, very quickly. In Germany, Hyperinflation also happened. The most well-known example would be in Germany in the 1920s. Through World War I, the amount of German paper marks increased by a factor four. By the end of 1923, it increased by a billion of times. From the outbreak of the war until November 1923, the German bank issued 92.8 quintillion paper marks. In that period, the value of the mark fell from about four to the dollar to one trillion to the dollar. At first, this fiscal stimulus lowered the cost of exports and increased economic growth. Weird. Let's read that again. At first, the fiscal stimulus lowered the cost of exports and increased economic growth. When the war ended, the Allies saddled Germany with another one, 132 billion marks in war whoa, reputations. Production collapsed, leading to a shortage of goods, especially foods. Because there was excess cash in circulation and few goods, the price of everyday items doubled every 3.7 days. The inflation rate was 20.9% per day. Farmers and others who produce goods did well, but
but most people either lived in subject poverty or left the country. Again, what makes us think that our that Rome can't fall? What makes us think that our dollar can't collapse? I got asked this question um, probably six months ago. I was giving a speech to some high school kids and a very successful, somebody I really, truly respect, a very successful business owner in town asked me, since you invest in cryptocurrency, are you betting against the dollar? And I had never thought about it like that. Um, and I, my ultimate answer was no, because I have almost an equal amount of funds stimulating and within the traditional stock market. I own Tesla, I own NEO, I own Coinbase. What else do I own? Um, Bitfarms, um, Clovis Health, a, a bunch of different other long-term plays. And she asked, like, you, you're betting against the dollar. And I said, no, but I'm preparing for that. I'm preparing for an in, the inevitable. We have to change from this system of paper currency to something else. And cryptocurrency fits the docket. And so I am preparing for that time, I'm not betting against it because I'm still putting money in there. I actually just increased my long-term investments yesterday. So I'm not betting against it, I would say. And that gets us into the crypto provision. Um, very basically, the infrastructure bill was passed. Um, the verbiage was uh, changed, but uh, Congress is on recess. And so once they get back, they will try to figure out what they're going to do with it. But pretty much um, the original verbiage stated anybody that sends, receives, stakes cryptocurrencies needs to be registered as a broker with the SEC. Um, so you think about your traditional TD Ameritrade. Um, they are a broker. With cryptocurrencies, they are trying to get every individual to become a broker. Um, th th I don't think that's going to happen, but now your Coinbase's, your all these have to have um, documents sent and become actual brokers. The thing that I am worried about is the offshoring of all of these cryptocurrency businesses. So China, which I think is a mistake, but that's what happens when you live in a fucking communist country, banned all Bitcoin, all cryptocurrencies besides their CDBC, okay? Um, I think that's, a, I think that's a, a mistake. So at, at that time when all the Chinese government outlanded all that. We had a huge onshoring or offshoring from China of crypto miners and cryptocurrency advocates and people that have funds invested. And uh, now the United States is down that same path. I think regulation equals acceptance. I really do. Um, we do have to have some type of regulation, but if we continue down the path and push and offshore all these cryptocurrency users, that is not good. That's not good. I know, I know this is a total overhaul, a total recall of everything that we've learned. The SWIFT system, the fractional reserve banking, the ability to have this entirety of this system is going to get flipped on its head. And change sucks, but we have to do it. We have to do it. The first country that completely encompasses and holds the responsibility of building a great system around cryptocurrency, I think is going to thrive. And you ask your baby boomers, um, my parents actually have got on the crypto bus, which is awesome because you ask anybody their age and they're like, oh, it's, it's worthless. There's no use case. It's digital fluff. It's digital money. I had a conversation with a family member when I was on vacation and cryptocurrency was brought up and this person is highly against it. They think it's just digital nothing, that it's going to be a rug pull, it's going to be gone. I made a statement that made him turn his head and look at me and I think a light bulb went bing. I said, I have made more money investing in cryptocurrencies 
then I do my annual salary. And when I say salary, I, I'm a business owner, so I just, I make my own money. But I've made more money investing in crypto than I can make in my job. Digital fluff. It's a digital fluff, right? It's just nothing. So the crypto provision, I hope does not offshore everybody. I hope that we can find acceptance. I hope that we can find regulation that does allow the investors, the retail um, investors to prosper. Because I think if you miss this boat, you've missed the boat. Okay. Uh, and I've talked about crypto too many times. And then um, the most stressful portion that I noted would be um, what's going on in healthcare and private companies more specifically. I don't care. I really do not care where you lie on vaccination. I don't care. I'm looking you dead in the eye. You on YouTube, you behind the phone. I don't care where you lie on cryptocurrencies at all. I, I really don't, or excuse me, on vaccines. I do care where you lie on cryptocurrencies. Invest in it. Don't be a dummy. But um, we are now seeing massive, massive um, vaccine mandates across many different private sectors. Some have backed down. Some have not. Um, but many healthcare systems and many private companies have said, hey, you are mandated to get this vaccine. And uh, awesome, whatever. Where it upsets me is it affects my wife or it, it, it um, affects my family members or people that I love or friends. And uh, let's, let's set aside the vaccine right now. Let's set it aside, okay? Um, instead of saying the vaccine is mandated, let's say um, you have to work 100 hours a week is mandated. So every time you come to work, we have to, we have to work a hundred hours completely. Okay. Um, and it's forced upon you. I could give no shits less. I already give no shits what it is, but as soon as it's forced, I have a problem. I have a, a, a dilemma, a moral dilemma as soon as it's forced. You should have the choice to die from COVID and not get the vaccine. You should have a choice from getting the vaccine and dying. Whatever it is, you should have the choice. We've built this, this system on we have freedom. Open your eyes. It's, it, it's, it's fleeting. It's very fleeting. This has been the most stressful um, stretch of time in my entire life in my families and uh it, it just blows my mind and where where i have an issue is where is this line drawn and i'm talking to the democratic party where's the line drawn my body my choice right my body my choice i can abort any baby i want I can do whatever I want with my body. It's not any of your business. Where'd that go? So now we have to get this. We have to get this. No FDA approval. The creator of the mRNA vaccine says nobody should get this, but we have to get it. Where's my body, my choice? The hypocrisy is astronomical and it's almost comical if it wasn't such a serious situation. Where does this slippery slide end? What is the difference? And I said this to my, uh, my father and he thought I was a crazy man. I want you to think about this statement. We talk about history repeats itself again. What is the difference between Jewish and non-Jewish 
and vaccinated and not vaccinated. Catching my drift? What is the difference? Division between all those parties. What is the difference? Where is this going to be completely different that Colby's going to be completely wrong from what he's saying? Where's the difference? Again, I'm not against vaccination. I'm against no choice. If I could get studies that come out that prove this effective, the effectiveness of the vaccine, if I can get 100% certainty, sign me up. But until then, no. So what, where is the difference? And um, a Jewish family was asked during the, the most brutal time in the entire world, um, a Jewish family was asked during the Holocaust, why didn't you guys flee? Why didn't you guys run? Why didn't you guys get out of there? Why didn't you help yourself? And the family answered, we, we, we didn't know it was coming. The family answered, the changes happened slowly and surely, one new law at a time, one new implementation at a time, one other freedom taken at a time. The moment that they knew that they were in trouble is when they had to wear stars outside. Do we not see the similarities? The hospitals are putting stickers on people that are vaccinated. You walk into a meeting, five people in there are all, all vaccinated, they don't have to wear their mask. As soon as somebody unvaccinated walks in, everybody put your mask on. That person doesn't have a sticker. What is the difference, people? We think that, we think that socialism and all these things are just going to click. Now we're socialist. Now we're not a democratic-run uh, country. We're socialist. It's going to happen so slowly that you're not going to realize it. And I don't have some special gift. I'm not, I don't see into the future. This is my intuition. This is what I feel that is going to happen. Happen very slowly. And a lot of people have probably heard this before. But Saul Alinsky made his eight rules of converting a country, a people, into socialism. And first one on the list, shocker, health care. Control health care and you control the people. Number two, poverty. Increase the poverty level as high as possible. Poor people are easier to control and will not fight back if you are providing everything for them to live. I'm going to give examples for every single one of these damn things. Stimulus. Here's your money because you had a child. I understand it helps people out. When does that end? When does the check stop coming? Because humans, we get used to, oh, that check's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. I don't want to go without it. I think this is wrong, but I don't want to go without it. Debt. Increase the debt to unsustainable level. That way you are able to increase taxes and this will produce more poverty. Hmm. Increase the debt, print more money. Weird. Gun control, remove the ability to defend themselves from the government. That way you are able to create a police state. Take away the AR-15s. These are machine guns. We have, a, we have a people in office that have no idea from their ass and their face when it comes to marksmanship or guns. Welfare, take control of every aspect of their lives, food, housing, and income. Here's your child pay. Here's your stimulus money. Oh, you want food? You have to be vaccinated to go to Walmart. People, that is not far off. 
Having to be vaccinated to go get your food is not far off. Why? Why? Look at Australia. Since October, the numbers could have changed because I looked at this three days ago. Nine deaths since October. Nine deaths since October. And they have helicopters flying over cities. Get indoors. They have people pulling their children away from them, forcing vaccinations. They just stated yesterday that if you see somebody in public, you should not talk to them. Do not start a conversation because it's going to spread. Nine deaths since October. <sighs> Education. Take control of what people read and listen to. Take control of what children learn in school. Critical race theory. Hmm. I'm being such a sarcastic asshole, and I'm not trying to be. But please, just, just think. Just think. Religion. Remove the belief in the God from the government and the schools. That has happened a long time ago. It's happened a long time ago. Class, war Ooh. Class warfare. Divide the people into wealthy and poor. This will cause more discontent and will be easier to take tax from the wealthy with the support of the poor. Hmm. Divide the people into wealthy and poor. Divide the people into vaccinated and unvaccinated. Novel thought, right? I, I, I don't know really what else could be said outside of that. I'm sorry I get fired up. It's emotional. I know nurses, um, waitresses, people in the service industry having to take extra anxiety meds, not being able to sleep at night, having cried every single day because of all this. Why? So we can protect you. So you got your vaccine. But if I don't get it, yours doesn't work. But if I get it, I could still give it to you and you could still give it to me. But then you need a second booster. And then you need a third booster. And then there's another variant. We're creating a Petri dish that equals I am legend. A kid can't even have a cold anymore. I used to eat dirt. But a kid can't have a cold anymore. We're not helicopter parents anymore. We're a helicopter society. <sighs> um, I don't even know if I want to bring this up, but uh, there is a medication out there that has been proven, used in Mexico, to be very effective against COVID. And uh, it's not on patent, so there's no money to be made off of it. All I'm going to do is I'm going to say go listen to Joe Rogan um, with uh, Weinstein and another doctor on there. I can probably pull it up for you. Um, I want you to go listen to that podcast because Joe Rogan has a big enough platform that he can't get pulled down. Next Level Training, Next Level Radio doesn't have that, sorry. Um, it is number... I'm getting close... Number 1671, Brett Weinstein and Dr. Pierre Corey. Go listen to that. Just go listen to it. Left, right, center, liberal, conservative. Go listen to it, please. Um, there's a drug that works. And uh, it's, it's not getting the attention it needs. Um, yeah, it's crazy. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok has been taking down all content related to um, that medication, have taken it completely down, have sabotaged people's content, have sabotaged people's channels. And uh, again, I don't think it's far off to say that 
you can't go get your own food unless you're vaccinated. I don't think that's far off. What, what makes us think that we are um, immune to the falling of this country of falling back into Germany? What, why? What, what do we have that's so good? And then don't even get started on this whole Afghanistan thing that's happened. Um, I know veterans that are upset about that because they've had three, four, five deployments and is it all for none now? Was there a better way to do it? I guess we'll never know. Um, then the border crisis. What happens there? What, why is that so absolutely crazy right now? I have some figures here. So from October 20, 2012 to May 2021, we have seen almost a double increase in uh, migration from our southern border. Um, Family units and unaccompanied child or children has rose all the way up to 180,000. And um, single adult apprehensions at the border, anywhere from 100,000 to 120,000. These are figures from the American Immigration Council, not Facebook. Okay? That's a massive increase. That is a huge increase huge increase and we don't think that that has an effect on our overall COVID numbers. Hmm. New York and LA have come out saying you cannot do anything recreational. You can't go to gyms. You can't go to the movie theater. You can't go to X, Y, and Z unless you're vaccinated. When are they going to say you can't go to Walmart? When are they going to say you can't go get your groceries? A month, six months, a year. We know that this is going to be going on for another two, three, four, five, ten years. Ah, <sighs> yeah. I don't know. I'm, I, I feel better talking about it, I'm getting off the chest, but it's this overarching. Um, one of my one of my mentors, one of my favorite strength coaches in the world, Cal Dietz. Out of Minnesota talks about stress and uh, there's studies on this. I don't have the studies here with me, but it's not a revolutionary thing that you got to fact check me on. But the body um, has a stress filter and that stress filter comes down and it all funnels into the same response. Our body reacts to stress, whether that is financial stress, why, whether that is breaking up with your boyfriend, girlfriend, whether that is a looming dark future for your life, it all funnels in and is taken in and reacted to the same way across all borders. So me going to the weight room and stressing my human physical body is going to be taken the same way as if I can't have my bills met at the end of the month. Stress is stress. And I know everybody that's watching this, everybody that sees this, everybody that I know is going through the same or worse than I am. And I just hope that uh, we can come together and figure this out. But this is the most pessimistic feeling that I've ever had. Usually I'm like, oh, just gotta be the optimist. The cap's half full. I gotta keep on pushing. And I'm not the guy that just gives up. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep grinding. But um, they're doing a good job of breaking us. And I hope you guys realize that. I really do. That is an episode of Next Level Radio. Peace.